Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today, quick video, I'm going to be gluing some coral onto a coral plug. There are challenges associated with keeping certain corals on the sand. Most coral in its natural habitat doesn't actually live in the sand, but in our tanks there's many corals that we do want to keep on the sand. Uh, and for that reason there's a few hints and tricks that you can use in order to more effectively keep corals on the sand, uh, at least visually from our point of view whilst protecting them from some of the dangers of being on the sand from their point of view. Those dangers include things like bristle worms and other critters that live in the sand, as well as the sand itself, which can be quite abrasive to coral tissue. What I've got in the tank right now is a scully that in my tank blows up really, really big. Its flesh gets really large and creates almost a bit of a sail when the, the flow goes past it, which is causing it to move around the tank, which is not ideal for it or for me where I want it to be in a particular spot. Uh, its skeletal base is quite small, so I'm going to be gluing it onto a frag plug, and the frag plugs I'm going to be using are these Aquaforest frag plugs. These are really cool because they've got a fairly uh, natural looking shape. They're quite rough, the surface is very jagged uh, and I've found in my experience that they one, blend into white sand really really well and two, if any parts of them are exposed and not shown to the sand they collect coralline really quickly so they can look quite natural. If you need extra weight or you need to prop them even higher because you have a deep sand bed it's really easy to just glue two of them together because they have perfectly flat bases so you can glue two together You'll also sometimes, if you're using these to glue them to your rock work, you'll find that a perfectly flat base doesn't work very well gluing to rock work. So you use two together and you can use the indented side of these to uh, effectively find a nook in your rock that they'll suit. Anyway, let's get this coral out of the tank and I'll show you how I'm gonna glue it to the frag plug. As you can see, the skeleton of this coral is tiny compared to the size of all the flesh when it's fully inflated like this. And it's been creating a bit of a sail effect in the flow and causing it to move around my tank. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to be using these Aquaforest frag plugs and I like the Me brand coral glue. I find it is quite thick and it bonds quite quickly. Now, with this scully, as we can see, its skeleton is really quite small. So what I'm going to do is glue that inside the nook of one of these. Just got a bristle worm there that I'm going to get rid of. He is unfortunately not going back in the tank. You just want to clean the surface, get rid of any sand or worms. Um, check for vermitid snails as well. You definitely want to remove them at, um, given the opportunity anytime you've got a coral out of the tank. We just have one little vermited snail there. And by the looks of it, another one just there. All right, I think we're all ready for some super glue. So it's best to just wet the frag plugs first. And I'm going to be fairly generous with the super glue in this instance, but because we've got plenty of room to work with. There we 
go. I find it's best to clean the nib of the super glue straight away and put the lid on immediately when you're finished with it. it makes it always ready to use and prevents super glue drying on the top and making it difficult to use next time. All right, so now we've just placed that on there. Flip the coral over. Yep, as you can see, he's squirting water out. Finally decided he wanted to deflate. He's been fully inflated all this time. Amazing how much water is gonna come out of this scully, how inflated it was. Now I'm just gonna let that sit where it wants to sit in there and let the super glue bond for a couple of minutes. Just like that. And as you can see, that's gonna be lifting this coral off the sand bed a good couple of centimeters, uh, which will prevent um, sand dwelling critters from burrowing into the skeleton and just give it that little bit more weight and heft to prevent that very large sail effect from causing it to fly all around the tank. I find this glue usually forms a bond almost instantly. Um, so, and given that this is quite an easy gluing application, what we're doing now, we're putting essentially a cone into a uh, into an indent in the rock and I was quite generous with the glue. Uh, I have no doubt that this is gonna be very effectively bonded already. And it is, as you can see. So, pick up the whole thing. Much easier to handle now as well, given that it's on this frag plug. And we'll put him back where I want him. And in this case, I'm actually going to create a bit of an indent in the sand so that the frag plug gets just a little bit buried and it will uh, it will bury itself more so as the sand moves around with the varied flow in my tank over time but as you can see it blends in quite nicely even with the frag plug as it is right now being purely white and it won't be long before it gets covered in coralline for any exposed parts anyway. Alright so that was just a quick update on how I like to anchor certain corals down in my tank. This works for anything, not just scollies and trackies and large LPS. You can use it for gonies, uh, SPS, uh, essentially anything that you can glue down. Uh, if, if you want to keep it on the sand, you absolutely can with just a little bit of work and a little bit of protection for the coral by using either frag plugs like this or rock rubble. These look much nicer than your traditional frag plug. Uh, obviously this style of frag plug which, which looks very artificial and unnatural in our tanks and I usually only use these for when I'm keeping corals on a frag rack. Once I add them to my rock work, I always remove these frag plugs. So I hope you found this helpful. My name is Marcus. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.